Hello again, this is Robert Veach here. This is my video review of the YZQ brand native 1080 progressive 5G Wi-Fi projector. It's 500 ANSI lumens bright. You can see it has a nice lens cover on there. And what's unique about this is it has a highly refractive five layer glass lens. Now I've reviewed about 15 LED projectors and only one other one had a glass lens. And why that's important to you as a consumer is it's generally much clearer and it's scratch more resistant and it just has a better optical quality as opposed to uh, plastic lenses. So when I first turned this on, I immediately noticed that it was a much clearer image. And what's also unique is a lot of times the focus is on the side. This has a dial on the top, very easy to focus this. And even when you leave it focused, this can be put on. It doesn't project the glass lens outward like a lot of units do. So we're going to go over everything on there. We're going to show you everything about this. This company, YZQ, offers a new replacement or exchange within 12 months and professional technical support for this product for three years. So if you have any questions about the operation, you can contact them and they'll help you out. Now, as I mentioned, this is native, 1080p, which means that uh, the sensors inside here are set up for 1080p. It'll support 4K. So it's clearer than a 720p projector, which is nice. And because it has 5G, you can get faster speeds if you're connecting to your Wi-Fi or if you're doing screen mirroring, it'll help that work faster. Now typically, uh, something, an LED projector like this with the brightest that this is, is, it can go pretty large. But I found that most of them work best if you run them with 72 inch diagonal or six foot diagonal or eight foot diagonal screen. You're gonna get the best image in a dark room with that. If you go bigger than that, the image starts to get dim in my opinion. But a lot of times they rate these at 300 inches or 25 feet. But I recommend you stay within uh, six to 10 feet, six to eight feet of diagonal and get a nice refract refractive or reflective screen and you'll be all set. They've come a long way, these LED projectors. They've gotten really bright and pretty impressive. Now what's nice about LED projectors is I have a projector in my studio that's quartz and when that goes bad, it's gonna cost me about $800. And the lifespan of these is about eight to 10 times longer than the uh, other lights that are on, typically used. This also uh, offers uh, plus and minus 50% 4D keystone and manual focus correction. So whether you flip the projector, position the projector, vertically or horizontally at any angle, you don't have to worry about it. No distorted images. And you can adjust the image from 100% to 50% via the remote. And that's a really nice range. We're gonna try that out with the remote right here. You gotta supply your own AA, uh, AAA batteries in the remote. So you can see what it comes with right here. It has a nice HDMI cable. It has an audio video out cable. If you want to go to a uh, to more traditional monitor, uh, more traditional amplifier, uh, you have the capability right there. And then it has the power cord with the US 3 prong, prong 120 volts on there. This is also equipped multiple ports, including HDMI, USB, micro SD or TF card, audio video, and 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So you connect to a variety of media devices such as a TV box, TV sticks game consoles, DVD players, smartphones, tablet, HDMI enabled devices, wired headsets, wired speakers to play videos, TV shows, and photo sharing. So let's take, let's remove these auxiliary parts, components, and I'm gonna show you a round look of the projector. So here's the lens cover. Let's remove that right now so we can take a look at the nice glass lens on there. These are sensors for the remote. Here is the focus wheel and that will move the lens in and out. I really like that being on the top like that. On the right side, there is the AC power, and I believe that's a vent input. On the back, there is the speaker and a vent input for airflow and another infrared sensor. And on the left side of the projector, 
there is heat coming out through a filter, there's USB port, HDMI, TF card, audio video out, and headphone out if you want to try headphones on the unit. Here on the top you can see that focus wheel I showed. Then you have all your major controls right here. These are all lit up really nicely. I like the way they did that. It's not confusing, laid out really clearly. If you look at the bottom of the projector, you can see it has the ability to be mounted from a ceiling. Those are metric threads and uh, you can get most projector mounts that are work with those. And then if you look right here, there is a screw that you can undo and that allows you to raise the projector if you need to have an angle change on there for your projection capabilities. On the bottom also they have this really nice oversized silicone gray legs or feet. I like that so this holds it in place even on a slippery smooth surface. It also comes with a nicely written manual and a quick start guide for screen mirroring. So with all projectors the further away you go from the screen the larger the image projects and they have a nice little table there showing you you know how many meters away and what the diagonal is 40 inches up to 240 inches and again I recommend you go within the 80 to 120 inch uh, size of screen so here I have it set up in my movie theater and I've got it uh, projecting and I have a USB that has some home movies on there and I have a TF card with some home movies. We'll be testing the HDMI later on. So I have it focused. I use the focus wheel and it's all focused and uh, you notice it's kind of a trapezoid so if you go to the option menu right there and you work your way down to keystone correction hit OK and now on the right there you can see that you've got horizontal calibration I'm going to go to vertical calibration hit OK and now I could change the trapezoid to make it a perfect rectangle just like that and now if you want you could refocus it but it looks like it's stayed in focus really nicely and now it's a perfect rectangle and that's because you know I'm not at a perfect angle to the screen because it's up and now you can make a perfect adjustment for that which is nice and of course you can go to the picture mode and you could do color temperature aspect ratio noise reduction projection direction you can see you can change that and you could even go to the HDMI mode for PC. And you move to the right and you have sound, standard. You have balance control, auto volume is off. And then there's the OSD language, you could restore the factory default. Blending OSD the duration, blue screen is on, and there's that correction which I already showed. Then you also have a ability to do a timer, a sleep timer on there, on the menu. Now anytime you hit the uh, source button, you can get to whatever source it is. And there's where you have your screen mirroring on the right there. But you also have a choice of what input you're going to put, whether it's USB, HDMI, audio video, or TF card. So here I selected USB and it's playing on the screen a home movie. And it looks really nice. I have the studio lights on a little bit here, but the image looks really clear. And really bright and the sound is really nice it's coming out of the back right here and you have volume control so you can put it louder or soft 
Now filming an image is not doing it justice because it looks really good. Now I'm playing off the TF card. I selected the TF card and I could play this uh, cartoon which is really nice for kids. You can download cartoons for free from YouTube and they're copyright free and they have a whole selection of things. That's a beautiful image. And it's got really good sound. I can clearly hear everything. And it's a very clear image. And bright. And the fan is not bad at all. You can feel the heat coming out right here. So it's doing its job. It's cooling the unit off. But it's not really noisy. I'm sitting about a foot from it. And it's really quiet. Now we're going to try screen mirroring. So I'm going to follow the instructions in the uh, manual. That is for quick starting. And we're going to try it for screen mirroring through wireless connection using cellular data for an Apple phone and on the menu there when you hit input or source there's where you could see and you can go right to screen mirroring right there we're going to give this a try so here we have mirroring on and uh, so whatever is on the Apple phone is now projected and we're using the Wi-Fi bearing for iOS and uh, it's pretty fast because it's using our local Wi-Fi so if you ever want to mirror anything that's on your phone you can do it now I have HDMI selected and I'm going to my Roku player and it looks really nice. I'm going to find some HD footage to show. So here's some 4K footage. So it looks really nice. And again, this is 4K footage that it's supporting in playing. So what do I think about the YZQ 1080p native projector? Well, I tested all the functions of this and it works really nicely. Has good sound, very clear image. I love the glass lens. I love the ability to focus it on the top. The trapezoid adjustment was quite easy to use and it worked really well. So this is a great product, a great buy. I'm going to give it a full five star rating. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you alerted to new video uploads. And if you like this review, please hit the like button. There'll be ordering links in the information and comments section. Please use those links to order this product to help support this channel. I hope this review helped you with all your buying decisions. Thank you for watching.